Hi and welcome to today's video. We're going to structure things a little different today because I want to talk about NinjaFlex 3D printing filament. Um, if anybody hasn't seen NinjaFlex before, it's uh, um, it, it's bendy, and if I can just stretch it, I'm not moving my fingers. I am stretching it there, so it's got over a hundred percent stretch on it. Uh, I'll just compare that to normal ABS, which is uh, out. Very rigid, so you can't even bend it, and it just stays where it is. And if you kink it, it, it goes a horrible colour, and, and you've got to cut that bit off and throw it away. So yeah, Ninja Flex, flexible stuff to make flexible parts. But can you put it through a DaVinci 1.0A? Let's find out. Now, the structure of today's video, it's going to have some time lapse in it, and I'm going to put some text on the screen as the time lapse is playing, so I don't have to constantly kind of remember the settings and stuff like that. So hopefully you'll be able to see that in a sec. But the first thing we need to talk about is how do you load NinjaFlex into a DaVinci 1.0A? Well, it's not easy, I can tell you that, because you need to print it hot. And when I say hot, I mean you've got to max it out. You've got to max that temperature to 70 degrees. If you don't, it doesn't feed properly. So when you do load filament and it heats up to 220, fair enough, you can feed it in and you can press load filament. And what, what happens is the extruder starts to feed in filament. Uh, the hot end's not hot enough and it all gets tangled around the extruder wheels. So you have to feed it a different way. And basically what you do is you manually heat up the, um, the extruder to 270 degrees. Obviously, you're going to have to use you know, repair your host 9 point, uh, 0.92 for this, so you get control of the extruder temperature. Heat it up to 270, feed it in manually till it stops, and then go into the um, into the jog in the menus and jog the extruder a millimeter at a time, and you'll eventually start seeing NinjaFlex coming through. If you don't do that, you, you, you're on a non-starter from the beginning. It's just not gonna work. You need to get the hot end really hot to even load the stuff. Anyway. Once we've done that, we can cut to the first time-lapse video. Now, this time-lapse video was a fail, a total fail. It was a 10 millimeter test cube, and all that happened was it printed the first couple of layers, and then it all jammed up. This is what happens when you don't print at 270 degrees. Okay, so... You can see it just started printing on fresh air and it took me about 10 minutes to untangle all the um, the NinjaFlex out of the extruder and reset the printer. So we move on to the, uh, onto the second video. This one was shot at, what was it? Let's think, let's think. Yeah, it was 40 millimeters a second and there was no slowdown, no cooling effect. Obviously the DaVinci 1.0 doesn't have a cooling fan for the filament. Um, there was no cooling effect on it at all. It, it ran 40 millimeters a second. And as you can probably see, it all got a bit hot. Um, that's not a good thing. You know, uh, it's just not. This is the part here as it came off the printer. Let's see if you can see it. So we can get this camera to focus. And as you can see, it all, it's not cube shaped. It, it's all melted. It's it's not good. It's just not good. Um, one thing to, to, to note is the bottom layer, when I pulled it off the print bed, actually separated. You know, it had bonded to the bed that well. So that was a complete fail. Not good. Wasn't impressed with that. Took us about half an hour to clean the printer up. Because this stuff gets everywhere. So we cut to the third video here. This is the DaVinci 1.0A running with a slowdown for a cooling effect. And what that means is it will run at 40 millimeters a second until the layers take less than 30 seconds to form. And then it slows down to 10 millimeters a second or some variation of that depending on how long the layers take. And as you can see, it wasn't much better. You know, it, this thing just kind of like got holes in it. So... It's not great, and uh, if you want to see that part, there it is, right there. As you can see, it's just a big mess of horribleness. Can you even see from your fingers? Yeah, you can. And it's just not great. And again, 
the bottom layer as you can see it totally ripped off even the fill even the fill just totally melted to nothing on this one and the bottom layer became th this lovely little strip of nothing so ninja flex and a da vinci 1.0 no unfortunately not not unless you've got a filament coolant fan now Ninja Flex in a, one, a Da Vinci 1.0A with an E3D. We'll find out in the future when I do it and, and get the coolant fan running. I'm going to do all this again. But stock extruder 1.0A, no, it's not going to work. If you want to try and blast the front of it with a desk fan or something, give it a go. Let us know how you get on. Uh, just for comparison, um, like I said, I'm not going to show the, uh, the time lapse of these, but the Prusa. I ran it 260 degrees C. The bed was ambient, no heat, um, and a little bit of glue stick on the glass. And this was the first one out the Prusa with no cooling. As you can see, it all kind of melted the same. Where's the, where's the, this was the second one out of the Prusa with cooling activated um, and a slowdown. It's got a 25% uh, fill and it's quite solid. This was a third test out of the Prusa with no fill at all and two perimeters. It's very squashy. And this was no fill out of the Prusa with one perimeter. And as you can see, it's completely split because it's the walls just aren't thick enough. Now, Ninja Flex is a pretty cool material. And... You know, if you can get it to work on your printer, you can print cool things like this. Anybody recognize this? This is Marvin from 3D Hubs. And, yeah, he is an anti-stress ball because you can squash him. And he just returns to his original ship. So, there are definitely uses for... Well, unless you want to make squishy things. Definitely uses for Ninja Flex. I, would have, I was hoping that the Da Vinci 1.0A would have handled it a bit better. It didn't. Um, as you can see so I'm quite disappointed with it really um, I've got the Prusa to compare it to and I'm going to try and compare it to most things these days that I try to put in which uh, brings me swiftly on to something else this came in the post today as you can see it's Bendley now it looks like normal ABS filament but it's bendy and it returns to its original shape. And there's very little damage to it. You could feed that back into your printer. So it's not as bendy as Ninja Flex. Ninja Flex is kind of like rubber. This is more like um, um, uh, bendable plastic. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, and does it work in the Da Vinci? <laughs> You're all dying to ask. Does it work in the Da Vinci? Well, actually, here's the footage and you can see for yourself. So all I did was I used a standard... Da Vinci um, profile for this for ABS and as you can see it printed perfectly it was absolutely brilliant no problems at all and if you want to see that part it's right there and it it doesn't it doesn't squash because it's got a 40% fill this thing I wanted to give it a good chance of, uh, of, of printing out but the walls on it definitely feel soft it's really weird so I'm going to give this a few experiments in the Da Vinci. Um, I haven't run it through the Prusa yet. The Prusa's busy doing something at the minute. You can probably hear it. Um, but I am going to experiment with this because I believe the perimeter numbers are going to affect how bendy that stuff is. But that's bend layer. Um, it's clear. And, you know, I'm going <laughs> I might even make some wine glasses with it. How sad's that? But, uh, yeah. So, there we go. What have we learned today? We've learned that you can't put Ninja Flex through a Da Vinci 1.0A, but you can put Bendley through it. And you can print Ninja Flex with a Prusa, which we all already knew anyway, because we've all watched the videos. So, if uh, there's anything you want us to try, anything you want us to, 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 to explain in the comments, please just, as usual, leave a comment. You know, I'll get to them when I can. And um, please like the video. If you want us to do more videos like this, hit the like button. Really helps us out. Really lets us know that you're kind of enjoying the content. 
and if you think if you're new to the channel and you think wow i want to come back and see this geordie bloke talk about something else hit the subscribe button and then you'll be notified every time there's a new video comes out there'll be a little one appears next to the, the channel name in, in 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 your list in your sidebar so yeah go for it and as usual i've been steve thanks for listening